lose some money. You will lose some association. You will lose some people. And even some of your family members will start telling you, why are you dressing like that? Why are you getting up early in the morning disturbing us? <laughs> yes, I, live in, I lived in Egypt and I was in a house. And I got up 4.30 in the morning. I heard the alarm. I got up and I went out. I came back. They told me, why are you, what you doing? Why are you getting up that early? I said, the master, I heard the alarm. They said, you can pray here. I said, no. But I understand I should go and pray in Jamaah. They said, you don't have to be extreme. I'm in Egypt. If that's the case in Egypt, then what about the Muslims here? I'm praying in Mecca. In Mecca. At a very big mosque. Masjid Malik Fahd. Big mosque. Four times this size. Across the street from the people that hold the key for the Kaaba. I forget the name of that tribe. They hold, they're the holders of the keys for the Kaaba. And the king, when he wants to wash the Kaaba, he has to come to that person's house as a ceremony. Pick up the key, go to the Kaaba, open it. Those people who hold the key for the Kaaba, I never saw them at Fajr prayer ever. One day I saw him, the brother introduced me to him, he's washing his car. And I said to him, I'm very glad to meet you because I know your family have a big history. But I want to ask you a question. Yesterday, were you here for Fajr? He asked me, why you ask me that? Because your house is across the street from this masjid. And if you were here for Fajr, why you pray in your house and you don't come to the masjid? He told me, that's not your business. I said, probably it's not my business because you're holding a very big key. And this is what it is. We, when we become big people, we have big money, we got big name, we got big friends, we got big house, we got big family, we get also got big kibriya. And we don't have to come to the masjid then, you see. We can just stay home. No, O oh Muslims, we must be willing and courageous to be a stranger because those who are in the masjid for Fajr in the morning and those who pray and leave their houses for, for Isha at night to get the benefit of the 27 Ajr, they are strangers too. We must be willing to be strangers. And when we become strangers, it's going to affect our livelihood. It will cause people to under, misunderstand you. It will make you sometimes even doubt yourself. Why I lose my friends? How come my wife, she want a divorce? Because she's telling me I'm becoming extreme. Or in the case of the sister, she doesn't cover herself. She's wearing lipstick in the street. She's putting perfume on. She's working among the kuffar. And her husband is like her. And one day, she wake up. And she puts on niqab. And she puts her full clothes on. No more lipstick. No more perfume. She doesn't talk to the men. She's not working anymore because she understands to keep her higher to keep herself. She stays home and take care of her home and her husband says, what's happened to you? She says, yesterday I read an ayah in the Quran. I read the hadith from the Prophet Wasallam, and it made me cry and to think about my religion and I'm not doing that no more. And so he said, then I don't want you. You have become extreme. So she have now become stranger. Alhamdulillah, if he leave her, we ask Allah to give her another stranger. To give her someone else who is also a stranger. Because strangers belong with strangers. 
it will challenge your iman it will challenge your commitment the issue of deen came to distinguish father from son the issue of deen came to distinguish mother from daughter the deen came to separate individuals from the family to separate families from the tribe and to separate the tribe from the nation on the basis of what? Deen. The Prophet ﷺ said, Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnatu khulafa al rashidin al mahdiyin uddu alayhim bin nawajid. Hold on to them with what? Not your front teeth, the back teeth, your molars. Belief, commitment, sacrifice, knowledge, obedience, fear of Allah, consistency, courage, steadfastness, loyalty, respect, love for each other, brotherhood, discipline, patience, support, cooperation. These are the characteristics of the strangers. If we listen to the ayats which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to them, all of these ayats was calling them to these characteristics. Iman. Sacrifice. وَتُجَاهِدُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ بِأَمْوَالِكُمْ وَأَنفُسِكُمْ Knowledge. يَرْفَئِ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا منكم والذين أوتوا العلم درجات والله بما تعملون خبير أوبيليانس وما أتاكم الله أتي الله وأتي الرسول يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله وتواسوا بالحق وتواسوا بالصبر وتواسوا بالصبر وتوا <تصفيق> وتواسوا بالمرحمة أصبروا وصابروا والرابط الله ولي الذين آمنوا يخرجهم من الظلمات إلى النور والذين كفروا أولياؤهم الطاغوت يخرجونهم من النور إلى الظلمات لفوا إجادة The Prophet وسلم, said the strangers they have love for each other. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in one of the hadith al Qudasi Ain al Mutahabuna bi Jalali Al Yoma U Dhilluhum La Dhilla illa Dhilli. Who are those who love each other for my sake? This day, I will give them shade. On a day, there will be no shade except my shade. Oh, Muslim brothers and sisters, you and I, we should want to be strangers. We should want to be a part of the return of the strangers. And we should realize that no matter what the non-Muslims do, no matter what they try to do to blow out and extinguish the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by blowing with their mouths, meaning their television, their cinema, their newspapers, their books, their radio, whatever they do against Islam, the lies, the distortion, the misconception, whatever they do 
to try to wipe out Islam, they will never wipe Islam out because Allah يُتِمُّ نُورِهِ وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْكَافِرُونَ Allah will perfect his light and he will perfect it through the strangers. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he make you and I of the strangers. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he give our sons and daughters love for the strangers. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that our sons and daughters who have taken off their clothes and out in the jahiliya world who are selling drugs who are in the clubs, who have went astray, we ask Allah, they will come back to become strangers. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the Muslims who is in this masjid this, e this evening, the men who are here in this masjid, that they will come back to this masjid, not tomorrow evening, but in the morning for the Fajr prayer, so they can pray with the strangers. Because when the Muslims in Palestine, when the Muslims in Afghanistan, when the Muslims in Somalia, when the Muslims in Shishan, when the Muslims in Egypt, when the Muslims in Morocco, when the Muslims in Algeria, when the Muslims wherever they are, when they come out and begin to pray in the masjid as strangers, then Allah will give their earth back to them, their ird back to them, their kuwa back to them, because Islam then will be back. But you should not ask for the reward of the strangers if you're not acting like the strangers. And as long as the kuffar whom you associate with on your jobs, in your neighborhood, as long as they like you so much, you should think about it how they like you so much. O oh, Muslims, one of the most powerful things Allah gave to the strangers that made us Muslim the most powerful thing Allah gave to those strangers is the issue of da'wah. Da'wah in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You and I, we have the power in our mouths. We have the power in our chests. We have the power in our minds. We have more power than any other bomb in the world. Yes, the kuffar, they have the neutron bomb, they have the hydrogen bomb, they have the atom bomb, they got this bomb and that bomb, and they will blow up everything on the earth. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have not given them a bomb that will allow the hearts to explode. But Allah gave that bomb to us. The bomb that Allah gave to us is the D bomb. The Dawa bomb. It is the bomb that doesn't blow up any buildings. It is the bomb that doesn't break any bones. It is the bomb that doesn't harm anyone. It is the bomb that penetrates minds and hearts and causes people to explode inside and become strangers. You and I carry the bomb with us every day. But we're talking about some other bomb. We are reacting to some other bomb because we are fearing someone else other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us that the izza is for him man tasha'u ya izza man tasha'u wa yudhillu man tasha'u it belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala O Muslims make dua Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, come back to the deen and your respect will come back to you. Come back to the deen and all your power will come back to you. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will answer you. Teach your children about the strangers and you yourself learn about the strangers. وَأَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ يَا اللَّهُ غَفُرُ الرَّحِيمُ بِرَحْمَتِكِ يَا أَرْحَمُ الرَّحِيمِينَ ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقينا عذاب النار ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وحيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا ربنا إننا آمنا فاغفرنا ذنوبنا وقينا عذاب النار ربنا آمنا فاغفرنا وارحمنا وأنت خير الراحمين لا إله